Okay, today I thought we would do a little quick video on digging in a little deeper into impact wrenches and maybe what the future is holding for us, at least in the world of uh, Milwaukee and Ryobi, because many times we'll see a tool released in one of the lines and then eventually we'll see it in the other, such is the case probably in both of these. So let's get started here. First, a little history lesson, and not too much of in depth of a history lesson, but several years ago, we had the brand new Mid Torque Impact Wrench. Now, Mid Torque wasn't even a name anybody talked about uh, until Ingersoll Rand in Milwaukee decided to make a Mid Torque Impact Wrench. And I don't want to say change the game or change the world, totally misused and overused uh, terminology there. Uh, but it changed the whole outlook on impact wrenches, especially in the cordless world, because then we got a tool that not only was battery operated, we didn't need an air hose, uh, also had enough power to do, let's say, 80 to 90 percent of our everyday work. And it was smaller, lighter than our high torque models of the impact wrenches, which a year or two, a couple of years before, kind of, you know, set the standard in the first impact wrench that could actually do enough work for a mechanic to say, hey, I'm going to go to a cordless model. So anyway, a couple of years ago, we saw the mid-torque design. Now, again, we really started seeing a lot of people shift to this being that primary tool, and I've recommended that several times to say, hey, if you can only buy one tool, buy the mid-torque impact because you can do... 80% of your work and you're not carrying that heavy old high torque impact wrench. But as we know, we'll still hit those lug nuts, we'll still sit, hit those suspension components, those Honda crankshaft bolts where the middle guy, the little guy just can't handle it and we have to reach into our bag and grab our big high torque impact wrench. Anyway, so a couple of years ago, we saw the invention or the release of a mid torque impact wrench. Well, after that side a while, Milwaukee came out and said, you know what, we're revamping that mid-torque. We're making a new mid-torque model. So this was the old 2860, then we saw the 2960. So we saw an update in, uh, in the mid-torque design. Up the poundage a little bit, so now we're, I think, at 650 foot-pounds for the high-torque uh, in both fastening and loosening. Um, I don't think we're really there on the fastening, but regardless, most of the time in the mechanics world, we're worried about releasing something, pulling something off, which we're hitting those numbers very easily uh, with the mid-torque. Anyway, so we designed the new mid-torque. Uh, we got a nice triple LED light here on the front and just a really nice upgrade to the mid-torque model. And then we saw the revamp of a compact as well, a really nice M18 compact, kind of gives you that that size of like the M12 stubby, but now we have it in the M18, so a little bit stronger, and we can get the M18 and a half inch or a 3 8 drive. So really nice uh, unit there as well. Now that's not really what I wanted to talk about today, so let's get to it. Okay, so what we've seen recently, we've seen the Ryobi line be revamped in the impact wrench world. And just earlier this year, maybe last year, but I believe 2021, we saw the new Ryobi P262 impact wrench. Now this is meant to be a mid-torque model. Now it's a little bit bigger than the Milwaukee is, so not quite as compact, but as far as performance, very close to performing uh, in that same level. So now we're seeing a mid-torque model in the impact wrench for Ryobi. Now we jump to a brand new model that is supposed to be released, I believe, in October of this year, October 2021. We will see this tool hit the shelves, and it's the PBL IW01, and it's the first high-torque impact wrench from Ryobi, I think like 1,200 foot-pounds. I think they're saving like 1178 of nut-breaking, nut-busting, or breakaway torque, whatever you want to call that. But again, 1178 foot-pounds. We see the triple LED the design here on the front. Why do I say that? Well, it's interesting that number one, we'll be doing a full review on this. Probably it'll hit sometime next week. Uh, so sometime in late June, maybe early July. Um, but my point here is, are we seeing something that we'll see Big Red come out with 
in the near future. Very well could be because this is still the high torque model of Milwaukee's. Um, this is the one key version, but the non one key version is the same identical look. It just doesn't have the little hump here on the bottom for the, uh, for the one key application and the torque sensing. Uh, but anyway, this is the high torque model. Still very much looks like the old mid torque model. And again, we saw the mid torque change the design to here. And then we saw Ryobi release this. And now we're seeing Re Ryobi re release this. So is this telling us something of what this is going to look like? I think the answer is probably a resounding yes. But Milwaukee may prove me wrong. Now, what does that mean? Well, actually, we really don't know other than seeing three LEDs, which would be great. We'd love to see that those LEDs up here on that fastener area, up here around that socket uh, versus down here on the bottom where it kind of just shines up randomly um, to the area you're working at versus pointing it directly at that area where you're working. So that will be a really nice change if we see that, which again, if it follows suit with the other impacts is probably the case. But let's take a little deeper dive into here. Yep, let's take it apart and see what we find. We have yet to uh, review this, so let's hope that it works when we get done. And then maybe we'll take the Milwaukee apart too and just kind of compare things. Okay, so I've covered this in an episode where I actually break down some impact wrenches, so I won't get into too much detail other than what we have here. We have a planetary gear set, nice big bearing, I like to see that. Uh, so we got three planetary gears that ride in this ring in here coming off the brushless motor, and actually that center is the, uh, is the drive gear off the brushless motor. And what this does, this way reduces the RPMs by the motor spinning at whatever tens of thousands of RPM, 10,000 RPMs, whatever, uh, to then turn these planetary gears that ride against that ring gear that then reduce that RPMs down to the, you know, two, 3,000 RPMs that we see actually out of the anvil here. And then these are what they call dogs, and these dogs ride in here on this impact. And as that spins, this acts as like a flywheel. This is really heavy, and it hits those dogs, and what happens is how it, it hammers on that socket and then this spring compresses right here and it jumps over those dogs into the next gap there and then this thing slams down again, rotating hard and hitting again and that's how you hit that the, the hammering mechanism. That's what's hammering. And this spring is going up and down, bouncing this drum back and forth as it hits these dogs. That is a very heavy uh, counterweight and, uh, and anvil mechanism there. Nice big anvil. Um, so you see two ears there. So basically on every revolution, you should hear it hit about twice. I want to get a weight of this. So I'm going to bring in my scales here. And let's see here. So without the anvil, you're looking at one pounds, 12 ounces. So one and three quarter pounds. And then, so a little over four ounces for the anvil. So we should be right at two pounds. Yeah, right at two pounds. Yeah, one pound, 15 and a half ounces. So two pounds um, for that impact me mechanism. And that's where you get a hard hitting mechanism. I guarantee you this thing's gonna hit really, really hard. Uh, doesn't always mean that it's just gonna, that it's gonna be the best or the strongest, but it's definitely gonna hit hard. When this thing hits, you're gonna feel it hit in the gun for sure. While we're here, let's go ahead and take the Milwaukee apart as well. Just maybe, just maybe I'll get these back together. Probably smart to take the battery off too. that ball. 
Okay, let's bring our scales back in here. And four and a half ounces. Four point one ounces. Four ounces. So it looks like Milwaukee's got a little bit heavier of an anvil. No, I'm not doing any swaps right now. Look at the size. Uh, Milwaukee looks like it might be a little bit longer. I think that may be where it's getting uh, that additional half an ounce or so. So again, same type setup. You see the uh, the inside gear there, the pinion gear, if you will, and then it drives these another large bearing here, uh, drives these three planetaries, and then we see that counteracting spring. So again, it looks like the Milwaukee on the high torque, a little bit bigger of a spring, a little bit longer longer travel of a spring, a little bit thicker of a spring, maybe, eh, maybe not. Uh, I'm not going to measure that right now, but I think that counterweight is going to be a little more. So again, let's weigh the Ryobi with the anvil right at two pounds. One pound, 15.7 ounces. <laughs> there you go. That tells the tale right there. So we're at two pounds, nine ounces. So we're at two and a half pounds. So we're not even two pounds on the Ryobi. Ever wonder why Milwaukee hits so hard? Ever wonder why they drive so much torque? That's part of the answer right there. Number one, driving speed as well as a two and a half pound anvil and counterweight or driving weight, whatever you want to call that. And same idea with the dogs. As the dogs come around, hit this, counteract the spring, jump over, spin around, hit the next one and hit again. Let's see if we can get these back together and work again. Okay, now for the Ryobi. Let's see if we can get it back together. And it still worked. So, did we find anything in the Ryobi that we might find in the new, if we have a new Milwaukee High Torque? I don't know. I think we'll see the lights, but as we can see, I think uh, the Milwaukee is still set up to be a harder hitter or to make more work happen um, than the Ryobi is. Probably intentional, um, but anyway, interesting to see but definitely a nice hitting machine here and we will see when we do the review. Hey, as always, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and would you also hit that subscribe button, but only if you liked our video. If you hated this whole take apart and uh, brainstorming of what's gonna happen, then by all means, give us a thumbs down, but uh, would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day, keep smiling.